polls are showing a tight race. High pressure system moves out. Reporting in chapter, Aaron Roney. Since then, the world and country and Kern County has never been the same. I do know that part of the president's plan is to provide universal community college as well as universal pre-K. How do you feel about that? And then a little bit on what the governor was saying, and I think that's something that's overlooked, is firefighter safety he just mentioned. Not only is this new equipment going to help on the ground and in the air. The pandemic put Independence Day celebrations and travel on hold in 2020. This year, millions plan to head out for the holiday, but travelers could run into some roadblocks. The traffic was a big issue last night. I know our morning anchor, Sarah Shahaya, was able to capture video of that as well, so we're glad it's getting a little bit more under control. Thank you, Fiona. And a Ridgecrest man has been arrested for trying to kill his wife wife's boyfriend. On Friday around 10 in the morning, Ridgecrest police found 23-year-old Elijah Sullivan ramming his car into another car. Both President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are campaigning in Florida today where polls are showing a tight race. All lanes on Southbound Highway 99 are back open this morning after a shooting last night. Neighborhood near Hart Street and East McCord. It looks like Deputies do have guns drawn. We were getting word just a little bit ago that we saw them starting to go into the residence. But this gunman went to the station, opened, fired. We did get confirmation one firefighter is dead. It is believed to be a disgruntled employee who then went back to this place. Looks like maybe their home. Some activists are denouncing the tournament for going forward with the event in the wake of Georgia's controversial new voting law. David, I think you got the measuring stick out a little too early, but of course, like you just said, we're going to continue to monitor those conditions. I know the calm before the storm and with that storm system, Aaron Perlman standing by to talk a little bit more about the forecast and the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council estimates Americans will eat 150 million hot dogs this 4th of July. And the iconic food has an interesting history behind it. Out here, it is very windy, and though there's nobody around, I'm having my mask on because there's a lot of ash. Now, just behind me, past these trees, I don't know if you can see, but there is a white propane tank. That is once where a house stood. It has been destroyed in the fire overnight. The KCSO still needs help from the community. There was a lot of people here who saw what happened, a lot of potential witnesses, but not a lot of people coming forward to report what happened. We don't know a lot about what happened, but we do know this a car was driving eastbound on Ming when it veered right and actually crashed into a utility pole and the crash was so bad it nearly severed the car in half. Please do not know where he's at this evening. We do know that both men are facing murder charges. Don't expect gas stations or rest stops to have everything you need. Make sure you're bringing proper PPE, hand sanitizer, all that good stuff to keep you safe. So with those mobile clinics, just to let you know, they're not going to the same areas every time. They're actually pivoting quite a bit. They're getting a lot more calls saying, hey, you know, we need to go here. We have a demand here. And they're even expanding to the weekends to get more people vaccinated. Well, the roses are red. The violets are blue. The pandemic continues on. So what are you going to do? Good morning. Welcome back. I hope you're awake because I'm about to get loud. I'm about to be energetic. So you're going to be awake after this, I promise. All right, taking a look at yesterday's almanac. We do see that your yesterday high was about 69 for Bakersfield. It's going to be about the same for today. So enjoy that nice crisp fall weather that we've been waiting for. Thursday, we're watching this little system play out here. It's not moving near us. It's not really dipping into our area, but we could see some more winds associated with that in our, again, mountain areas, desert communities. Taking a look at that satellite radar, nothing for our area, maybe a few isolated thunderstorms, some showers up in our Sierra Nevadas, but for us staying on the drier side yet again. Think about that fire danger though, as we progress throughout our Monday morning, it will pick up. So check it out by 5 a.m. It starts to pick up a little bit, definitely on the outskirts of our mountain areas and those desert communities. Car came out of nowhere, you know, took the pole, came outside, all the lights went off, so that's my first reaction, go outside, see what's going on. Wednesday night, a car was driving east on Ming Avenue when it veered right just a few feet from where this diesel technician works. We were working on the on, on the trucks, you know, and uh, out of nowhere we just heard like a loud, loud bang. The car with four people inside hit a utility pole and split into two just outside DTIS Diesel in southeast Bakersfield. Now, two people are dead, two are in critical care units, and all that's left is carnage to be cleaned, a memorial in a gruesome moment that can't be unseen. I walk outside and I, and I come outside and I see the car split in half, 
Uh, the back seat was still intact. The back seat of the car was still intact, and there was a young lady there. And uh, you could tell, you know, she wasn't responding, she wasn't breathing. Junior Gayona was the first person to see the wreck and called 911 right away. It's, it's sad to see young people go at that age, and you know. The families of those that died in the crash were unable to speak on camera, but tell us they are looking for answers. BPD is still piecing together what caused the deadly crash. The people that were not responding, I just seen them go up to them, touch them on the neck, see if they had a pulse, and um, they just walked away. Gayona hopes the family gets the answers they are looking for. It's hard, you know, they're young, and it's horrible, you know, it's a horrible, it's a horrible experience. Just off of 7th Standard Road, you'll find the Rosedale Ranch. It's hard to miss the massive landmark known as the Cross of Palms. The trees were planted in the late 1800s by the Kern County Land Company to attract English settlers. Now, the property is in the hands of the Gardner family, with Keith Gardner the proud owner. It was my job as a kid was to pick up the palm fronds that fell on the ground, and I had to pick them up and, and keep them out of our cotton fields and our alfalfa fields. Now he's doing all he can to keep the palms standing tall. Probably for the last 20 years, I've um, been in disputes with PG&E who comes out every six months and want to trim or lately they've just cutting, cutting the trees down. Gardner says he's paid thousands in legal bills and has tried to reason with the company, but both sides haven't found common ground. I'll pay for the removal, removal of the lines, uh, but I'd like to have be credited back for that over in my PG&E bills over time, but they've said no to that. PG&E did provide us a statement saying that this is part of a vegetation safety issue and that, quote, we understand the landowner does not want the trees removed. However, the trees were located near distribution power lines, are in poor health, and are at risk of failing and falling into the facilities. We had an arborist come out and, and is in disagreement with their uh, analogy that the trees are or disease. They're not disease. They're just old. Stephen Montgomery, vice chair to the city of Bakersfield's Historic Preservation Commission, says the palms are significant to the town and deserve respect. The statement that the uh, trees are too near the power lines is, is actually a semantical error because the um, basic English, no, the power lines are too close to the trees. They are now working to get the trees on the local city registry, but they don't even know if that's enough. They are of the position that they can do what they want and they have no responsibility uh, other than to fulfill what they consider to be their prerogative. But it's clear a lot of effort is going into saving this area of Kern County history. You know it's, it sounds a little funny to get um, get hung up on some palm trees but when they've been around this long uh, they need to be preserved. Lovers may be opting out of the Valentine's date night and going for something more pandemic friendly. But with COVID and, you know, restaurants trickling in, opening and things like that, we're, we're kind of a gift that is something that people can actually give to someone they love. Log Cabin Flores is getting a lot of love this year with more people going for the timeless gift. So it's red and it's roses. So the red rose, I mean, we have all different other uh, items that you can give, but hands down, it's the red roses. When the heart holiday falls on a Sunday, sales typically go down 20% for the flower shop. However, with what we saw from the end of last year and, and the start of this year, uh, sales being up quite a bit, I didn't plan for the 20% down. I planned the other way. Nearly three in four people feel it's important to celebrate the day of love this year in light of the pandemic. However, when it comes to gifts, people are heading online versus shopping locally. <laughs> Business has slowed down for Aunt May's sweet tooth, but it's picking up as we get closer to February 14th. You get all women coming in. I noticed this, but we don't have any men coming in. So I don't know if they don't know about us, but we've got plenty of stuff for ladies in here. From the new bacon toffee to toffee fudge, the sweet shop has you covered for the big day. However, you can't go wrong with the classics. Our number one seller is the milk chocolate. That's the traditional toffee that Aunt May used to make. And then the dark chocolate. And then we sell a ton of these Rice Krispie treats, believe it or not. Operating in a pandemic was tough, especially in the shop's first year, but Valentine's Day is proving to be a big day. Yeah, I'd say this is like the third biggest, maybe, behind Easter and Christmas. Though there was uncertainty for small businesses with the pandemic, they are still going strong, proving their love for the community. We have 
thousands of customers that depend on us. So I thought, well, we'll just give it our best shot.